Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Golden Boots Podcast. This is your host, Jorge Gonzalez. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. We love soccer. For episode 14, we have Yang Scafano. Yang is a UNCC midfielder. He's got a, a background in playing in Brazil and in Spain. Yang, how are you today, my man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Kind of getting used to this uh, Charlotte weather, right? Yeah, it's getting sure. cold, man. Switching up on us. <laughs> nice, man. So uh, our podcast is all about bringing in different players and people of the soccer world i know you're a uncc uh midfielder man how how's everything looking so far for you guys it's it's great i mean we're still training still pushing hard uh-huh just putting in the work even though we're not playing we're still staying focused and pushing hard i know you said that you, you guys are looking good right i, I think we're looking <laughs> great physically <laughs> mentally tactically i think we're just only going up we're nice going man awesome so tell us a little bit about yourself man uh, I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh -huh. uh, like you said, I, I have spent time in other countries. I spent time about a year in Brazil. Okay. Uh, and I spent about four months in Spain. Nice. So that's a bit about where I've been. A bit more about myself. Uh, most of the time, let's see, hobbies. <laughs> I like to fish. Okay. I like to... Really? Yeah, okay. I like to fish, actually. That's one thing. The, is it therapeutic about. for you? Like, people like to fish because, like, some say it's, like, therapeutic. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's a lot about, like, patience. Yeah, just, like, know, I don't think I could do it. Maybe <laughs> time to think, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, soccer-wise, nice. let's see. So, you grew up playing futsal. I remember you told, telling yeah, me a yeah, about futsal, that. Yeah, yeah, futsal... That's what made me as a person. Uh -huh. uh, futsal, without futsal, I wouldn't be the player I am today. Okay. Because I, I, I don't know if you play futsal, but it's just a, it's a totally different game than outdoor. It's a uh -huh. lot faster, a lot more technical, and I think that's what kind of sets me apart on the field a little bit more. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah, so at the beginning, I think you've mentioned to me before that, like, uh, your dad kind of uh, hammered you the first uh, couple of times. For you sure, man. How I started was I started playing rec soccer when I was about – seven or eight uh -huh. and I was horrible uh <laughs> I was the worst player on the field I didn't really know what I was doing and I just kind of ran around and then it came to a point where my dad made me quit he made me stop everything he's like son you're you're horrible and <laughs> you have no desire for the game so why play and at the time I was just like yeah it's kind of right I mean <laughs> What's How point? old were you? I was like eight years old man I was <laughs> I didn't really know much about anything so you so made me a quit. typical like foreign dad. Yeah, right? it, it's it's a Latino thing, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it you, is. you definitely understand. Yeah, but uh, then after that, I took about a four, three, four year break, uh -huh. and my dad opened a football facility in Charleston, and then that's when I kind of got back back into it. I was still the worst when I first started. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were kids that were like three years younger than me running circles around me. Okay, but I mean, as time went on, grinding out football. I mean, my dad owned the place, so I practically lived there. I was there okay. every day. 10-hour shifts working, too. I was working behind the concession stand and stuff. And I just, that love for the game kind of grew back inside of me. Nice. And then when that happened, my dad started making more connections. And that's uh -huh. when he made a, he made a friend in Brazil. And so every summer I'd go to Brazil and I'd, I'd train futsal there with real Brazilians, you know. is Brazil's just another world. Yeah. And after each summer I'd come back and every time I came back I'd be like, a lot better, just kind of a different player, different style. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on, I mean, you just kind of saw my game completely changed. And I think, I mean, that's kind of what futsal did for me is just got me where, to my, where I am today. That's awesome, dude. Tell us about that those differences that you saw, man. I think that's really cool. Like, you, you practiced futsal, and then you went to another country and practiced it as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> first time I went there, I was definitely uh, – that kid that nobody wanted on the court. I mean, Latinos is like, oh, man, and always <laughs> complaining, yelling, you know what I'm saying? So it was a lot mentally uh -huh. on me because they just did not like me. I was the American kid, you know what I'm saying? And But, I mean, the playing style there is it's rough. Uh -huh. it's, it's emotional. And they're just so get after it and get it done, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I remember my first day there, I was going for a ball, and I was still kind of, I like to call myself like a twinkle toes because I wasn't, I had no like, no like man power, no, uh -huh. no ferocity or anything. And so the first ball I was going to, this, this dude just took me out, man. He, he dropped his shoulder and just took me out. And that's when I was like, whoa. And he's like, welcome it. to Brazil, yeah, bro. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks for the message, man. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And after that, I mean, that's when I really started getting into it and just starting pushing and 
I think that's what made me kind of rise. Okay. And then you played uh, in Brazil, right? For yes. a while? Yeah, for, uh, that's when I went after, uh, recently, it was about a year ago. Uh huh. I was in Brazil for a year. I was playing for uh, Curitiba. Okay. And it's, uh, right now they're Division One. They're okay. not doing very good, but they're okay. Division One. Hey, that's, I mean, yeah, Division One, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I was there, and uh, that was a, a very big turning point in my career, I feel, feel like. Even mm -hmm. though it was very recent, I feel like I've changed a lot since then and through that experience what do you think changed my mentality for sure mm. um the the brazilian it was a very professional environment i was not professional but it was a professional environment just the players there a lot of them soccer is the only way out yeah a lot of them come from in brazil we call the favela uh -huh. which is the the slums yeah and their desire is out of this world you never see anything like it wow and it just, gives you perspective right for sure i mean i come i mean i'm blessed with everything united states people don't understand how much of a blessing united states is you're right man the life i mean simple things like having a car at 19 years old that's that's unheard of in brazil yeah man and just being with those players through trainings just living with them seeing that different perspective of, of life i think really changed my perspective on how much more I could be doing with the resources I have. Mm. And like over time, I feel like that's just going to help me a lot because here in the United States, you see these kids, they, they kind of have everything. Yeah. And I feel like they don't make the most of it. Yeah, man. So I actually had a conversation with someone recently about that. Like uh, a lot of things in the U S in terms of like growing up and wanting to be a, a soccer player is more like a pay to play kind of system, mm -hmm. right? Where like, People, uh, your parents or somebody pays couple, some money and like you start joining these clubs and other scouts and stuff start seeing you. But the problem is you leave out like those hungry players that like, okay, like if someone's parents can't afford them, even if they're a great player, sometimes they run into this issue where like, okay, like this is a great guy, but like we don't have the money or the resources yeah. to put him through. And I think that's why Brazil is so, so superior with their players. Yeah. Because... These kids, it's either make it or break it. You're either going to do that or you're going to be a, a construction worker. And nobody wants to be a construction worker. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, nothing against my dad. No, was yeah, construction no. business. I've yeah. worked construction most of my life. Yeah. But, I mean, just the desire there, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think, and I, I think that gives you a little bit of perspective too. Cause like, even when you go to teams here or in other areas, like, some people don't have those past experiences that mm -hmm. you do so you see how they treat it versus how the people in brazil treat it and like that kind of i feel like that would give you an edge if you take advantage of it right yeah yeah of course i mean you can see players you can kind of like based on a playing style mm -hmm. you can kind of see what they've been through how they got there i mean you have some players that kind of they just go through it kind of passive mm -hmm. but then you see those players in training like alfonso davies we were just doing yeah. a kind of an exercise with the college about alfonso davies uh-huh He's, he's, he's just a grinder. I mean, he's just what kind of so things? Hard. What kind of things can you tell us in terms of mindset that, that they were teaching you or telling you guys about that? In Brazil. About Alfonso Davies. Alfonso Davies. Yeah. Um, we do, we have this uh, psych psychological, uh, his name's Dr. Dan, uh -huh. and he was showing us a video and like the story of Alfonso Davies, how he came from the refugee camp. Uh -huh. And then he came to Canada and he just kind of worked so hard for his family. Yeah. And seeing videos of him at Bayern and stuff, I mean, he's made it. Yeah. He's 19 at Bayern making millions. Yeah. He's still putting in the work like he's down at the bottom. And yeah. for me, that's it's just an eye-opener because you see him making it and just pushing himself so hard. And then, like, like, even me, I feel like I'm not even doing enough and I'm nowhere near to what Well, I think is. what they're doing is working then, man, because I feel like that's how they – that's, I mean, I, I would imagine that's what they're trying to do, trying to instill in every player, like, yo, you guys are good. Like, you, because I think when you're a soccer player, you have, like, you can get into this image of, like, okay, I'm a good player. Like, mm -hmm. people see me. Like, yeah. but they, you still have to put in the work. Of course. Right. And, I mean, and then it comes to a lot like, like you were saying, like, oh, they see me. And then it kind of goes into like a social standpoint. Like, if they think I'm playing good, I'm, I'm, I'm good. If coach yeah. likes me, I'm fine. But then that's when you got to think about it. It's more of like a personal game. Am mm. I better than I was yesterday? Pushing forward. That's good. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's just what it takes to, if, you're, if you want to take it to that next level, 
it's, it's a very independent and personal challenge and, and fight against yourself to push yourself yeah. harder every single day. I like that they talk to you guys about stuff like that, man, because I think even like from the outside looking in, some people might look at Davies and be like, oh, man, he got lucky. Mm -hmm. Like, no. Yeah. Like, there is no such thing as luck when it comes to playing a high sport or in anything, man, running mm -hmm. a successful company and anything that you do, like, there takes a plethora of work, yeah. right? But most people don't see that. Most people don't see you train every day or the decisions that you make to make it to make you get to the quality player or whatever that you do to get to that success. Everyone just sees the success because it's noticeable. Yeah, and I mean, it sounds corny, but, like, putting in that work, when nobody's watching, yeah. I mean, it's 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 corny. Everybody says it, even when they don't do <laughs> it. But it's so true. Yeah, and yeah, just putting in that work. It's it's so important, and pushing yourself. It's just so important. That's I haven't reached my full potential. I mean, uh -huh. I can talk all this this stuff. Yeah. And, but I'm I'm not even close to being like that yet, and that's well, what I work on every well day. Well, that's the good thing that is that that you realize that mm -hmm. you don't think like you've made it right, and yeah. I think that's I even like the greatest players. I feel like feel the same way. They're like, dang, I could do better at this. I can do better at that, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. The only difference I would say would be like people like Ronaldo that like just say he's the best, but I feel like he, in terms of mental and physical capacity, mm -hmm. he's probably 98, 99% to where he needs to be, right? He, he's, he's an <laughs> alien, man. I don't even know how to explain or describe him, man. Yeah. His, his, like I watch videos on him. I saw this one thing on Instagram a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. Where he was, it was him, it was him, it was two other players, I can't remember who they were, and they were asking who the best player in the world was, and then the other two players said somebody else, and then Ronaldo said me, Yeah. and then they all started laughing, but Ronaldo's like, and he just had a straight face on, like, he was, he was for real, Yeah. and I think that, that mental toughness is, it's, it's so important, so key, and he, he's like, mastered it yeah a hundred percent bro i think yeah i would say those are two like very important components like you kind of got to be a little bit humble in terms of okay i can get better mm -hmm. but at the same time like anytime you go on the field like you have to believe that you're one of the best like when that guy pushed you down like it could have been very easy for you to say maybe this isn't for me or mm -hmm. even if you made those doubts you still came back and did it anyways yeah for sure. that's what's important it's it's okay to fall but it's not okay to always stay down. Like, you got to continue to get back up, right? Yeah, and I think the big thing is, like, I feel like everybody has that moment in their career. And I say career, I mean, like, your whole life. Yeah. That moment when somebody tries to push you down and your response to that is what kind of guides and, and leads your future into life. Like, for me, there was a moment where I was playing. I was 14-ish, and uh -huh. I was playing on a club team. I was still wasn't very good, and I was I was playing futsal. We were in a little futsal tournament, and uh -huh. I tried to dribble, and I lost the ball, and they scored a goal, and we ended up losing the game because of that one play. And then my coach came up to me. He's like, "Yang, stop dribbling. It's not for you. Just stop." And for me, as as a player, getting back into it, that that was really hard on me. Mm. And my mom, that's my queen, uh, she she pulled me aside after the game, and she said, "Yang, you can't let." the things that other people say get to your head like that. You just, mm. you got to be yourself. You got to grind it out. You just got to keep pushing because if you let the opinions of other people determine who you are and what you do, you're not going to make it anywhere. You're not going to live up to your full potential that, that you can, like the things you can accomplish. You know what I'm saying? Dang, that's good, bro. A hundred percent, man. Like even, it doesn't matter who it comes from. Like I understand that you, like coaches, they, they know things, they know, but at the end of the day, like you know yourself, right? Yeah. And the potential, like I've read once in the book that like whatever you believe becomes true, right? So mm -hmm. if you believe you're not good at something and you continually think about that, you're not going to be good at it. But you can use that same energy and think that you're going to be great at something and become great at it, right? Yeah, manifesting, man. A hundred percent, bro. Put it in your head and, and make it happen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think the, that's one of the things I like about bringing different players on this podcast is because a lot of them talk about that. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys understand that, like, it takes hard work, right? Yes. <laughs> For sure. I, I've seen a lot of the other players that have been on here, and you can kind of see that one main, main point, which yeah. is just work hard. I mean, you can't really go wrong with working hard. Even, like, if you're doing, like, say you're working on the wrong drills, uh -huh. you're still getting something out of the drills. It's not like 100%. you're just doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if you just work hard, I feel like 
the results will will speak for themselves and you, you're gonna you're gonna get somewhere for yeah. sure it's kind of like uh i like to think of it is like you know you've got players that some are mostly right footed some are left footed mm -hmm. right but now you start seeing players uh improve their weaker foot because there's always going to be a chance in a game where you can shoot with that foot and sometimes they're going to score right yeah but like that's the difference if you've never practiced that or if you never take a a, a second to to kind of work on that other leg like you you may get that opportunity but you may not score right yeah i, I need to take that advice from you man <laughs> <laughs> my left needs work man <laughs> but no i totally agree i working on your weaknesses and, and realizing your weaknesses yeah. too. i feel like a lot of players they don't realize what's wrong with them yeah and that's kind of what leads to their downfall but no for sure i need to, my left <laughs> man i don't even want to show you a video of me sharing <laughs> that thing because that's a whole nother mess show me in two years <laughs> yeah man, when you improve it okay sure. and i'll be like okay yeah he did improve it <laughs> for nice. sure man and you spent some time in spain too right i did uh i was there for three to f three months uh-huh uh, i actually left because of corona so uh -huh. it was very recent I, I was playing with uh, Sede Aldense. Okay. It's a, it's a second division team, I believe, second or third. Mm -hmm. And I was there training. I started on the U19 team there. Okay. And I just kind of worked myself up. I was I was really hungry mm. when I got there because after that year, that's when I got let go from the Brazilian team. Okay. So after that, I kind of realized that, oh, this might be the end. I didn't really have any any way out, no, no follow-ups. You know what I'm saying? I was just going to go back to... United States and just live out my life. I wasn't even thinking about playing in college. Mm. And so when I got to Spain, I got the opportunity there. I was very hungry. And that's when I had like my little apartment and I was living with other players. And my, I feel like that's another big, I have so many like big points in my life. Yeah. I know this a lot. Well, talk to them, us about them and whatever you can, obviously what yeah. you want to share. But I think like this is good insight for people mm -hmm. that like, that want to be soccer players or want that mentality or want to play in college. Mm -hmm. So I got to Spain. I remember my first day there, I was meeting all these people and uh -huh. Spanish. I can speak a little bit of Spanish. Okay. I kind of learned from like, it's Ooh. more, yeah. The Portuguese like, and Spanish. You can kind of like some words, like when you hear people talking, like I feel like I could stand, uh -huh. understand 60, 70% yeah. of what they say. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean the European Spanish, that's uh, a, you're right. <laughs> That's a different story, man. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. You're right. And so I got there. I was meeting all these people trying to speak Spanish. And then after that first day, I was like, okay, this is going to be tough. Language barrier. But I, I can do it. So that's when I started training with the U19 team. They they were a good team. But I felt like I could get more from myself. Mm -hmm. And they have a U19. They have the 23s. And they have the first team. So after about two weeks, that's when I got my first chance with the U23s. And... For me to get there, I was I was just putting in a lot of work. Um, we had so much free time. I wasn't studying. It, this was the easiest time in my life, but at the same, the hardest. It was the hardest mentally, but it was the easiest physically because I wasn't studying. I didn't have to worry about money. I wasn't working. I, it was just straight soccer. Yeah. So you, had, I, you were consumed with it. Yeah. I mean, that was my life, soccer. Yeah. And so I just had so much time to train. And like I was going in the mornings. I was going to the gym, and then I'd swim for a little bit, like, just swim for recovery. Then I'd go to training, and then i put in another training. I mean, it was just so easy. And, I mean, the thing is, like, that's just really hard to get, if that makes sense. Like, having that much free time, for me, is really just a blessing because mm -hmm. I know a lot of, I mean, my parents, they've, they've supported me. They've kind of sponsored me through this entire dream and this journey I've been on, and, I know a lot of people don't get that opportunity. Yeah. So when I got that opportunity, I just wanted to really make the most of it mm. and make worth, like make something of it. Yeah. So I was, I was training a lot and in about two months time, that's when I was already training with the first team. And that's when I really got like this, the game in Brazil and Spain is just different, totally different playing styles. Brazil is very technical. It's super fast. It's, it's mean, Trying to break your leg, like it's it's tough, crazy, tough yeah, soccer, right? It's crazy stuff. It's like tough love for sure. <laughs> and but in Spain, it's a very passive, a very possession based game. Uh -huh. Moving the ball, not as much like getting on you when you're defending. It's more like controlling you. Yeah. And when I got on the first team, it it took me a while to get adapted to it because these are guys. It's like older. It's not like more. The team was more old veteran kind of style. Okay. More than like the young fast. So it was a very tactical game, and I felt like tactically I wasn't at my best. I was more like the young dude, fast, physical. Uh -huh. So I learned so much from that first team. 
but but sadly corona hit yeah and i was stuck in quarantine oh there we had a real quarantine it wasn't like the united <laughs> states thing we got going here yeah it was real we were in lockdown for i think i was in there for a month uh-huh. just sitting wow. inside an apartment and i think that's another thing you just gotta see what you're dealing with and just kind of work with it yeah that's when i started i was doing zumbas man i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna hide it i was doing zumba <laughs> i was with like moms like it was like a little live stream and i was doing zumba just trying to stay fit man i could imagine like i don't know like uh say someone like just walked into your apartment yeah. and like, they see you doing zumba and then like a whole bunch of 40 year old women on tv what like saying. what's going no, on but it wasn't even a person man. i was alone there it was like a yeah like, my laptop and i was just doing it man. i was <laughs> Dance and doing whatever I could to stay in shape. But then I eventually, I managed to get out of the country, which was tough. Okay. And I got in contact with Coach Kev okay. and Coach Ozzy, and they they gave me this opportunity to come back to UNC. That's so awesome, I'm super dude. blessed for that, for sure. Nice. Talk to us a little bit about that, man. So you're at UNCC Soccer now. Tell us what you see. Tell us a little bit about that college experience playing soccer so far. Uh, the college experience is completely different than what I thought it was. Uh-huh. I thought that it was going to be easier for mm-hmm. sure schools i haven't studied for a year uh-huh. because i took kind of a gap year with soccer and uh-huh. everything so school is, is kind of kicking my butt a little bit <laughs> i mean i like to think i'm a good student uh-huh. but i procrastinate a lot okay so and i'd much rather be on the field than in the classroom typical soccer yeah player, bro yeah <laughs> but i mean i feel like our team's looking great this year mm. everybody has the right mentality we every day we're pushing through it even when we don't have competition, like till next year, I think our first game's in February. Uh huh. We're still getting after it. We're still mm. we're still taking in so much information, just pushing through it. I mean, we coach just said the other day that we were ninety percent like like distance and like intensity rates with like our little GPS monitors. Uh huh. That we're ninety percent from the college game. Wow. Which like this early? I mean, I guess not early in the season because we'd already be in season. Yeah. But without playing games, it's... it's That's it's, amazing, yeah. dude. So that that just kind of speaks for itself about how hard we're working there. And we're just... I just... I love how the whole team has kind of come together. And we're really just working together to make sure when that season comes around that we're ready to, to win something for sure. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so man. You guys are hungry then, huh? Oh, for real. Nice. <laughs> for sure. In terms of... Uh, one thing I want to touch on, since you have experience in different things, you've got experience in Brazil where the game is a little bit more difficult, more, like, tough love, kind of hard pace kind of soccer. Then you went to Spain, and you've got more of a... Okay, more of a technical game. Like, you, you can... When I think technical, I think Xavi, David Silva, yeah. these kind of guys. Now you're in uh, a college environment of soccer. How do you adapt to every single one of those different environments? For me, it's it's being open, having an open mindset. Mm. A lot of it's soccer is adaptation. I mean, you see soccer players going from Premier League, La Liga, making these jumps. Yeah, I don't think people realize when like you change everything. Yeah, the soccer player gets a lot of criticism when maybe they're not doing too well when they first get in the league, but it's it's a lot. It's a, it's a whole different game. Yeah, and I think for me it was it's just having that open mindset and just being a sponge, learning mm. as much as I can. Every time my first week that I usually get somewhere, I'm super quiet. I don't talk. I'm not there to make friends. I'm just there to learn. I kind of, I even, like, watch the littlest things, like, watching how players, like, like in Brazil, like, how they eat. Like, that sounds weird, but, like, how they eat, like, they sit down, they do a little prayer, which you don't see that in America. And they, the way, like, they just socialize and eat, I think it's different from how they do it in Spain. In Spain, it's very, like, the people kind of sit, like, by themselves. And so just, like, looking at the smallest things, wow, you learn okay. so much. I didn't think about that. It's like yeah. attention to detail, huh? <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, just keeping that open mindset and just taking it as much as you can will help you so much in the future because if you think about it, if you can adapt to any environment, you're kind of unstoppable. I mean, I don't mean to sound like like superhero unstoppable, yeah. but you if you can adapt, you can – you can find your way through any situation and just make the most of that situation and be successful in that situation. Mm, that's good, man. I think, yeah, like that's, that's not so, when you think of soccer, you don't think of adaptability, Yeah. but like you do, you have to adapt to what country you're playing in. You have to adapt to the type of team that you're playing, that you're playing against the team that you're on, what the coach wants you to do at that game. Right. Like mm-hmm. all, all these different scenarios that can happen. Right. Yeah. I mean like right now at the college, I'm a bit uncomfortable uh-huh. because of the playing style. Uh-huh. 
I, I think of myself as a very a very technical and a dribbler. Uh huh. And the the playing style we play is a very fast. It's we keep the ball a lot, but it's uh -huh. a very fast forward game. Okay. And one of my weaknesses is I don't. I don't really go forward. I don't look forward. I'm more like keep the ball. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like you get the ball to me. I play the six. So okay. I'm, I'm always on the ball. And okay. I just kind of play it around. But like coach has really been pushing me to play that one, two touch, get that ball, look forward and play that pass, which for me, I think that's the best game that I can play for that system. And I feel like I can help the team a lot okay. through, that, through that way. But it's just been so weird for me just <laughs> pushing through it. Well, the good that's good, man, because, I mean, sometimes you have to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. to grow, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm, I'm sure, like, when it, when I master this, yeah, I think I'm going to feel a lot better about myself. And that's another little thing on my belt that I learned and I adapted to and that I can use in the future. Yeah, that's good, man. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Charlotte FC. Okay. Um, Charlotte is a... Uh, uh, we're getting a team in about 18 months, and so, I mean, I see already they're making moves, so we've got a U15, U17 team. Yeah. We've signed two players so far, but we don't have a coach yet, which uh, I'm like, okay, well, it sounds like it's far away, but at the same time, like, as we know, time flies, you yeah. know? And so uh, what do you think is more important next? Like, should we be looking for the coach, or should we continue to, like, look for players? I feel like we should be looking for a coach. Yeah. Um, the reasoning behind that, I feel like the people that are ch the players that they've chosen. Um, I know there's one Spanish player, yeah, but Sergio. I don't know. I don't know the other one. Uh, his name is Riley. He plays in uh, he plays in the second division in England now. So okay. he, they bought him from the Australian league, and he got loaned out to Birmingham. Okay, so I two feel midfielders. Like, oh, oh, really? Yeah, that's good. Um, You'll be the third, bro. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so I would choose a coach because I feel like the people that are choosing these players are presidents, people that kind of run the club. Yeah. But I feel like in the end, the coach is going to have his playing style. He's going to have his idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see some coaches that base their games off one player. Yeah. That work around that one player. and Or you see some coaches that are much more team kind of oriented games or tactical games. I yeah. mean, there's so many different styles. And I feel like if you just keep working on just getting star players and then you just find a coach kind of last minute, those star players might not work into a system that'll that'll make Charlotte successful. That's true, man. That's a good point. I would agree with you too. I think that the next thing on the on the list needs to be a a, a coach. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the mentality be behind bringing in players. Like, okay, like you've got people that know, but at the end of the day, like the day to day, as you know, is with the coach, right? Mm -hmm. Not the people making decisions to bring in players. Like you see and you you interact with that coach, and you're right. Like I can think of like. Everton right now is doing really great in the Premier League, yeah. but Ancelotti bases his game a lot on certain individuals. Like Ham, he brought Hamas in for for this reason because he knew he could he could get the best out of him in the system where he's gonna be the star. Versus you look at a team like Liverpool, like there are stars, but there is a system in which that coach plays. So two teams that are doing really well, but it's based on the systems that the coach wants to play, right? Yeah, and like going on that, I mean, if you're just bringing in players, they, they might not work well together. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say anything about the, these choices they made about uh -huh. the two players, but you got one Spanish player and then you got one Australian playing in the, the English league. I mean, yeah. that's, that's two kind of different players. Yeah. So even both of them playing side by side in the midfield, you don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. So I'm not saying that's going to work bad, but you just don't know. And depending on the coach... That's that's up to him about playing styles. And that's true too, and, and like what you said like earlier about like your your coach wants you to do more one to one two passes. Like you don't know what type of style that the players that you're bringing in. If that coach is that is that what they want, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because in the end, it, I mean, the coach is the boss. You got to listen is. to him. He, he knows more than you, even if you think you know more than him. He knows more than you. Hundred percent, more bro. experience and everything. So, uh, the coach, I think that's the biggest focus right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good, man. Cool, man. Last uh, parting thoughts that I want from you is, man, what what would be your number one advice that you would give somebody that wants to play soccer like it? Out of all the things that you've learned through your experience, what would be that number one advice? Number one advice, be yourself. Mm -hmm. um, personality on the field is a huge thing. I feel like everybody has a different personality, and the way you express yourself on the field, it kind of makes you who you are. If you kind of try to be like everybody else, do the things that everybody else are doing. You're not going to sell yourself apart. Mm. And I mean, I've, I've caught myself doing that sometimes and just 
making sure you're you're true to yourself and you're and you're working for yourself and the right goals, family, religion, whatever pushes you. I feel like sticking to that will will take you far, not just for soccer, but anything in life. So for sure, just just do your own thing. That's awesome, dude. I like that because I think sometimes we try to mask ourselves to either someone that we respect or someone that we like, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's great if you love Ronaldinho and you want to play more like him, but you still have to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, and sure. you can maybe uh, add some of his kind of style to mm-hmm. your game, right? Yeah. So, uh, well, that's awesome, man. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming on episode 14, Yang. Thank you, man. <laughs>